Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name is Julie Koo, your interior design expert. I feel like before we dive into anything else on this channel, I have to stop you guys right now and show you a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to create and design your dream space. We're talking about the room that you have always dreamed of creating and living in. One that is functional, stylish, cohesive, inspirational, aspirational, fits within your budget, and overall suits your personality and lifestyle to a T. While everyone's creative process is a little bit different, and this is my personal process. I've been in the interior design industry for over 16 years now. I've owned my own business for over 11 years. So I've really whittled down that process to one that works for me. So expect the guide to be a detailed look on how I create the perfect space for my clients and how you can use these instructions to create your dream space all by yourself. Step one is to determine how you want the space to function. This is one of the first things they teach you in trade school. Form follows function. The late, great 19th century architect Louis Sullivan coined the term form follows function. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard this before. It pretty much just means the shape of a room or a building should primarily relate to its intended function or purpose. So the number one question you must ask yourself before embarking on any type of design is how do I want the room to function? What am I doing in the space? One of the first things I always ask my clients during the initial consultation is how do you live? You'd be really surprised to learn that not a lot of people can answer that right away. I know it's not common for you to sit there and try to dissect what you are doing in a space, but that is the number one way that you'll be able to develop a design that is custom specified just for you. So consider your lifestyle before you make any major decisions and let that determine how you use the space. Space planning tip number one is to brainstorm functional zones and section that into categories of how you'll use your space. For something like a bedroom, the clear function is for you to rest and sleep in it. That part is obvious, but you still need to consider your nightstands. What is it that you do before you go to sleep? Do you need a nightstand with different compartments because you're someone who likes to tuck things in the drawers? Are you someone who's super minimal and all you need is a surface to place a glass of water, your phone, and maybe even a book to read at night? In that case, you'll also need a picture lamp versus a regular table lamp or no lamp at all. First, determine how you're going to use the space, then you can decide all the little things that you need to install to support your lifestyle. Remember to first prioritize your needs versus your wants, envision how you aspire to live and determine the needs of the room around that. Step two is to find inspiration. You can find inspiration anywhere nowadays. You can go old school by tearing some images out of a magazine. You can take pictures and scan images of those that you find in design books. But of course nowadays, Pinterest is the number one source for pinning inspirations that you find on the internet. What is your style? What aesthetic do you gravitate towards? Most people actually have a hard time answering this question because like you, I am a complete mix of styles. I live in a mid-century modern California style ranch home but that doesn't mean that all of my furnishings are mid-century. I have some traditional pieces mixed in with modern ones, eclectic pieces mixed in with flea market finds, but no matter what you see in my home, they represent who I am, my lifestyle, and personal aesthetic. Once you have a collection of images put together, whether or not they're digital or physical, you wanna start dissecting all of the images and try to find some common theme. You wanna isolate colors you like, patterns you're into, maybe the style of furniture, the different textures, the type of furnishings, storage options. While your style may change and evolve over time, looking at these key inspiration images will help you determine your current style and the one that you aspire to emulate. Use these key inspiration images as a jumping off point to help you plan around your design. Remember that you don't have to commit to one style, but you should find a common thread so the space feels cohesive and very well thought out. Even if you love a mix of styles, usually color can pull everything into place. Speaking of color, we are moving on to step three, which is selecting your color palette. What's your vibe? Are you dark and moody or do you like bright and white accents? Are you someone who's minimal and loves neutrals? Or do you need pops of pattern and bright, vibrant hues to really inspire you? 
lock down the range of colors you'd like to use, like on a paint fan deck, and mess around with it until you're happy with your choices. We're really just talking about one room here. If you like a mix of colors that you don't think go together, try regulating that to single rooms. For instance, you could do the neutral vibe in the great room and something a little bit more bold and patterned for a guest room. Picking your color palette, aka your vibe, will help determine how the rest of the room develops. Step four is to measure the room. You want to start out with very simple measurements, length times width times height. Don't forget the windows and all of the door openings. You really can just do this on a plain sheet of paper. Just draw like a little rectangle or a little square. Draw out the shape of your room and start inputting the overall measurements. Those windows are especially important so you know what types of window treatments to buy. I never move on with the design plan before measuring the space accurately. Of course, I'm doing all of my measurements in AutoCAD, but you could easily draw your space on a blank sheet of paper or even graph paper. Step five, now you're ready to plan your space. Since you have the room all drawn out on a piece of paper with the appropriate measurements in place, it's time to fill in the space with your dream furniture arrangement. For a bedroom, it's quite simple. You need a bed, two nightstands, maybe a dresser, a TV console. But for something a little less obvious, like a great room, the overall measurements will help you determine the size of furniture that can even fit within the space. If you dream of having like a deep, loungy sectional that grounds your living room, you will know in an instant when you plop in the dimensions of that RH cloud sofa, if it's even gonna fit in the living room or if it's gonna swallow the place whole. Once you get your furniture plan figured out, you can mess around with the layout, move some furniture around until you're satisfied and happy with maybe like your top two layout options. Then while we're still in planning mode, you need to make a list for everything that you need in that room. Number one, a bed. What size is the bed? Queen, king, cow king. Number two, two matching nightstands, two matching table lamps maybe an 8x10 area rug or something a little bit larger. List it all until you're happy with everything that you need in the space. Having a list will help you stay focused and keep your eyes on the prize. Step six is to shop the room. This is where the measurements that you took in step four and the planning that you did in step five come to the rescue. You must shop for the room according to the measurements on your list. Stay focused and don't derail. Taking accurate measurements is what separates the professional designers from the amateurs trying to decorate their home. If you're planning a living room and you laid out a seven foot sofa and you're anchoring it with 18 inch side tables, you have to stick within your measurements when you shop. Once you have your measurements locked in, it's a lot easier to source than you think. A lot of online retailers like Overstock.com and Wayfair actually lets you filter your search by size, dimensions, weight, colors, materials. You really could get it down to a very focused search if you know what you're doing. This method really makes it more efficient for you to whittle down your search and find exactly what you're looking for in record time. But on the flip side, if you were shopping around and you actually found a piece that you loved and you want to use that as your statement piece, your wow piece to anchor the entire room, you'll first measure that piece and then you'll know the size of furniture that you can purchase around it. Step five and six really could be interchangeable. I say just go with your gut and purchase what you love. Really life is just too dang short to have lukewarm feelings about anything guys. So purchase the things that you absolutely love and the things that are just okay you can leave it in the cart for next time. Step seven is to create a mood board. Using the pieces that you've already pre-shopped for now is the time for you to create this mood board. You can do it in multiple ways. You can print all the pictures out, lay them on your desk, physically move them around like a little puzzle until you're happy with the look that you're going for. Of course, I do everything digitally. I input everything in Photoshop and it helps me kind of mess around with the layouts since I'm always changing my mind. Mess around with the vibe, print it out, tape it on your walls, walk by it, keep looking at it until you can fully commit. Make decisions that really speak to your personality, lifestyle, and aspirations. You know how they say dress for the job you want, not the job you have when it comes to fashion? I say design for the life you want, not the life that you currently have. To me, interior design is all about aspirational living. So make sure you are making key decisions based on how you want to live, not how you currently see yourself now. Step eight is start purchasing. Furniture can get very expensive, guys. So if you followed all of my steps up until this point, you'll know that you've laid the groundwork to make these very important decisions. 
Clearly, big ticket items like sofas and beds are just not cheap, so look for retailers with a good return policy if you're still a little indecisive. And if you haven't done so already, you can review my video, The Top 5 Things Every Home Needs in 2020, for some key ideas of what you can be purchasing for your space. I'll link it above as a refresher, but you should always have something bold, something cozy, something custom, something handmade, and something from your travels in your space. It'll help your space look custom designed and dreamed up just for you. And finally, step nine is to style and restyle and style and style again. You've measured the room, you planned the room, you planned the design, you got your inspiration, you started shopping, you've locked down all the key pieces of furniture you want in this space, you've purchased it, you've installed it, and now it's time to play. I love scouring my local thrift stores and flea markets for really cool accessories that are one of a kind. Not only are they inexpensive, but I feel like I can always find something that's really unique and not anyone else is going to have in their home. Remember that design is never done. It is not a race to the finish line to see who can get their home styled and designed first. It's all about finding key pieces that reflect your style and your personality. Look for things that you can collect and layer throughout the years. Moving things around will help you better understand your changing needs for the space, learning more efficient ways to let the room function as you need it, and most importantly, inspire Inspire the life that you dream of living. Overall, have fun guys. I am so excited for you to follow my steps and be on your way to your dream space. Remember that you don't have to follow exactly in this order. If you found inspiration before figuring out what you want to do in this space, let those images be your guide. I know interior design can seem very daunting. It's so overwhelming with the millions of options that are out there. You won't always get it right the first time, but if you have the budget to do so, sometimes hiring a professional to help you whittle down all the choices would be the greatest value for you. If you're interested in my e-design services, you can email me. My email is located in the description box. Don't let interior design and all the endless possibilities scare you away from creating your dream life right now. I know there's so much information out there, so many images to be inspired by, but my best advice to you is to start in your space. Understand your lifestyle first and ask yourself those key questions before embarking on any type of interior design. I hope you guys like this content. I've been meaning to make this video ever since I started the channel. This step-by-step -step guide is a tutorial that you can follow to create your best life ever right now. If you if you guys want me to dive into any of the steps in detail, leave me a comment below and I'll be sure to address it. A lot of these steps actually have a lot more detail to them. I was even thinking of dissecting the steps and turning it into an entire series, like a video on how to find your style or what is your personal aesthetic. I mean, is that something that you guys are interested in? If it is, let me know in the comments below and I'll determine if we even go in that direction. Finding your style is the one that all of my clients struggle with the most as well. So let me know if that type of video will help you. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.